so we're we're looking at a uh, this is the we're we're at a year now. I think uh, some uh, sometime last week was was officially the the one year anniversary, if you can call it an anniversary, of uh, when the first COVID cases was found uh, in America or in the U.S. And look, I'll admit, I'll be the first one to admit this is when all this stuff started. You know, I didn't I didn't think it it was as serious as what it was. You know, I was just like, okay, I get it. There's we do this every time, right? Swine flu and uh, e- Ebola, like, you know, I I get it. We do it. We do a deadly disease every couple of years, and then the media freaks out, and everybody gives them all their money, and you know, the media sensationalizes it because ratings are great. Whenever you have a catastrophe, I get it, and I was very cynical about it. Um, and you know, I was still on the road when when things were spiking. And we were, you know, comedians were making jokes about it, uh, you know, wiping things down with, oh, man, everything needs to be sanitized. Like everybody's making those jokes about it. And I kept talking to people and I was like, what do you want to do? Like, do you want to cancel the shows? Do you want to reschedule it? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? And eventually, like, at, you know, when after after I got off the road and I was driving home and I was talking to a couple of people and I was like, OK, this might be. This 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 might be the real real deal here. Like we might be dealing with the pandemic, and I started thinking about like, okay, well, who is this going to affect? We know this much information. Who is this going to affect? And I and I remember like I was like the first thing the first thing I remember saying was the people that are going to be affected by this the most are the working class. They're the ones that are going to be affected by this most because there were already reports of people that had COVID nineteen but couldn't take off work because America doesn't have paid sick leave. Uh, and, and, you know, their health care is tied into their employment uh, and they have to go to work in order to make rent. So even if they're sick, they go to work because that's the only way that they can make uh, ends meet and survive in, an, in a capitalist economy. So by virtue of capitalism being capitalism, it was spreading this disease. And I, and, and I immediately was just like, that's who this is going to affect. And it has, right? All of that stuff. Um, came true now there there's a uh there's different ways that this could have been handled um and it's between capitalism and socialism right so uh this is from the world socialist website uh and they're they're a pretty good resource they they talk a lot about like teacher strikes and things of that sort but this is this is an article that caught my attention of and and they kind of break down about like how and what capitalism and socialism uh, or or a socialist program they they keep calling it a socialist program uh, can prioritize and can do so so you know we'll read through it there's uh, I think six or seven of them uh, yeah there's seven there's seven points that they they do compare comparative analysis on so one cap, the capitalist program insists that the response to the pandemic must prioritize saving financial markets over saving lives. The socialist program insists that the response to the pandemic must prioritize saving lives over the financial markets. It's hundred percent true. You look at countries that have, uh, that are uber pro capitalist, right? Like America, like Jair Bolsonaro in Brazil. And even, even in India, they were doing this. These, these are neoliberal capitalist countries. And what do they do first? The first thing they did, I mean, I got off the road for a week and the first thing they did was pump a trillion dollars into the, into wall street. I knew people from various industries that had lost their entire livelihood and they were like, no, let's go to the banks first. And I, I think people would have been fine with them rescuing the banks. Had the banks canceled all the debt, gotten rid of any interest charges that they were going to have, and basically use that to, to you know, flood their debt, flood the credit that, the, that, that people had. If they would have done that, I think people would have been like, cool, okay, give another trillion to the fucking banks so that they can help us out here. Other countries that kind of don't look at socialism as this toxic word and you know the only examples they can throw are oh stalin oh hitler was oh that's a national socialist party oh that's what you want that you know it's like but those aren't real socialists you they became authoritarians because they were power hungry and greedy 
those aren't actual socialists. So for them to make that claim was was false. Countries in the UK, uh, countries like the UK and and in the EU and everything, uh, and I know there's problems there too. I'm not saying this is perfect, but they at least helped out their people. They said, yeah, stay at home. Also, we're going to cover 70 to 90% of your income. We're going to send you a monthly check so that you guys don't have to like freak out about rent, freak out about buying food. Uh, we're we're going to take care of its people. Venezuela, which is a socialist country, despite having um, American economic sanctions, which is economic warfare, he was able to cancel rent for six months uh, with no interest rates. He was able to give people food, um, you know, like groceries delivered to people's homes. Just taking care of people. That's what he prioritized first. And these are countries, yes, they have COVID within their countries. And yes, there is spread that happens within their countries. We could, you know, and, and, it, and it always happens at the time that we knew that the spike was going to happen. Um, but it's not as bad as America or Brazil or what's going on in India. The numbers aren't as high in, in a lot of these countries. So let's go to number two. The capitalist program asserts that the pandemic policy must be driven by profit interests. The socialist program advocates that medical policy must be guided by science. And again, if that is the case, right, we're looking at now we have a president that's like, oh, science, we got to rule by, we got to go with the science. And it's like, okay, well, well, you know, medical policy comes first. You got to mix medical policy and economic policy. You can't, you can't say that it's either or. It's got to be a combination of the two. And for, for as much uh, money as the health insurance industries and big pharmaceuticals have, have, have made in the last 30, 40 years, I think they can let it go for a year. And we, we talked about this earlier, how he can approve Medicare for all right now. And the fear that he has, and, it's, and, I, and I believe it's the same fear that he had when Trump was advocating for $2,000 checks, is, well, fuck, if we give them Medicare for all, they're not going to want to give it back. And if we do if we do take it away from them, there's going to be a riot on the streets, right? So it's the same thing with Trump giving to, wanting to uh, give people $2,000. Uh, was, he was basically like, well, fuck, if Trump gives them $2,000, then I'm going to have to give them even more. And honestly, even if it was like 600 bucks a month, it would have still been like a lot more helpful than just a one-time payment every 18 months. Like that's insane. Number three, the capitalist program advocates, uh, um, advocates a program of herd immunity, allowing the virus to spread with few restrictions as possible while vaccinations are produced and distributed. The socialist program calls for all measures to impede virus transmission until uh, the necessary number of people to stop community spread of virus has been inoculated. That's getting the virus. Uh, that's getting the vaccine out there. And, you know, the second they were like, oh, well, we're going to work on a vaccine. Everybody just hold tight. And they're like, well, how long is that going to take? I don't know, 12 to 18 months. But we got this Operation Warp Speed that might do it faster. Just hang tight. I know I know Republicans always call for, you know, limited government and, and not to trust the government and all that kind of shit. But right now you should trust the government. They, I mean, and that's kind of what they what they advocated for and at this point it, it becomes like it becomes this thing where you were like wait a minute you're you're telling us this virus is 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 you know awful and and spreads everywhere and we need to socially distance and lock down and do all this stuff but you're not providing us any sort of financial help and you're letting businesses die you know and i believe that that's an opportunistic um way that they kind of took a, a, a it was opportunism that they did that, right? Like it's beneficial for larger corporations like Amazon and FedEx and um, you name it. It's beneficial for them to not have small business competitors. And what did most people want to do in this country is support the small businesses because they weren't getting help from the government. So, but in a, in a socialist society, small businesses would have been taken care of either by virtue of UBI or just by being like, hey, we're going to, don't worry about the taxation. You know, we'll give you guys loans that was, 
but they very specifically were like, no, fuck small businesses. Also, stay inside and lock down and take care of each other, except that we're going to say fuck small businesses. So it becomes this high, like the mental gymnastics you have to do to rationalize that. Some, and that's kind of what leads people down to the conspiracy realm. Things don't start making sense. And then all of a sudden of like, ah, you know, whatever it is. Whatever, whatever the conspiracy theory you want to go down the rabbit hole of starts making sense a lot more. But that's all manufactured. It's manufactured by a, a capitalist program that doesn't give a shit. Number four. Uh, I lost it. There we go. Uh, the capitalist program insists in accordance with the herd immunity strategy that factories and other workplaces will be kept open for business. Socialist program insists that all non-essential workplaces will be closed down until inoculated workers can uh, safely return to their jobs. I, I mean, this is, this is like should be should go without saying, right? Like they shut down the airline industry because nobody wanted to fucking fly during a pandemic. And uh, what was the company? Fuck. I'm, uh, I think maybe it was GE because uh, GE makes like a bajillion different bunch of shit. Uh, they basically were like, yeah, we're still going to make jet engines. And their workers were like, the fuck are you talking about? for what? There's no planes flying right now, you jackasses. And they and they pushed and they and they let a strike to say that GE needs to make, um, uh, you know, PPEs for doctors. That's what they should focus on their manufacturing efforts on. But the but the CEOs, the big capitalists that that are in charge of GE, were like, no, just keep making jet engines. That's what's beneficial for our country. And let's keep these factories open. Let's keep these work warehouses open. Instead of and again, you know, I I feel like oh, for as much as we use shit like Amazon. And any sort of thing that, you know, delivers stuff to our houses. I think in a pandemic, you can say like, okay, some of these workers are going to get furloughed because they can't work shoulder to shoulder in trying to get your, you know, whatever, your your plastic bottle to your house within the hour that you ordered it. I think we could wait. I think we could take a day. It'll be fine. Number five, capitalist program demands that schools be reopened, claiming falsely that there is little risk to students and teachers. The socialist program, based on scientific evidence that schools are a major source of virus transmission, demands that schools remain closed until the pandemic has been brought under control. Absolutely. And there was enough time for them to figure out how to do virtual learning. That I think the the administration in terms of the government administration and the administration in terms of school administrations absolutely could have taken the time for the four months that they didn't have school um, to figure out how to do online learning, to figure out what to do uh, so that, you know, to, to improve the mental health of children and to improve the safety of not just the kids, but also the teachers and the, and all of the staff that work at the school. They could have very easily figured that out. Countries like Denmark did it. They figured out exactly what needed to be done with virtual stuff and exactly what needed to be done uh, to open schools. The American Federation of Teachers in America actually wrote that shit down. They did the CDC's job to be like, this is what needs to happen in order for schools to be reopened. Number six. Excuse me. The capitalist program seeks to restrict social expenditures aimed at counteracting the economic impact of the pandemic on the great mass of people while demanding that the central banks provide unlimited support for financial markets and large corporations. The socialist program demands that full income compensation to workers and small businesses to, for the duration of the crisis, the resource for this critical social rescue plan will be obtained through immediate restitution of trillions of dollars extended to large corporations under the provisional care of the CARES Act uh, and the uh, exproportion ex appropriation of the of pandemic profiteers who have made tens of millions and even billions of dollars as a result of unlimited federal reserve uh, support uh, for financial markets. So basically saying, you know, we fucking, if all of these people are going to make shit tons of money, then they should be required to give some of it back to the community. Kind of like what Eisenhower was suggesting back in the fifties 
where he was basically like, yeah, if you're a corporation that makes millions of dollars, we're going to tax you at 90%. Because that's how we're going to pay for roads and healthcare and all this other shit. We just found out yesterday Jeff Bezos is stepping down to take the uh, become the executive part of some executive board, uh, basically going into the into the uh, behind the scenes instead of being the the face of the uh, of Amazon. Uh, also, there's some antitrust lawsuits that I don't think he wants to deal with, and he's throwing it to the next guy. Um, so, anybody that's profited from the pandemic should be taxed high for making that much money. And I'm not talking about the working class and making ever. I'm talking about like people like Jeff Bezos, like the CEOs of Instacart and Lyft and Uber and, you know, Grubhub and all of these other companies that have made a bunch of fucking money. They should give some of that back so that we can have things like a UBI. Instead of dairy farms having to dump all of the milk and get rid of agricultural resources which is ha which happens through, through you know within capitalism because that's good for the the economy perhaps these folks can buy that out and give it to community uh food banks to mutual aid organizations to help people eat so that there isn't miles and miles of people lining up this is how capitalism failed they didn't do any of this stuff this is the last one. The capitalist program promotes a policy of vaccination, vaccination nationalism, restricting uh, and opposing equitable distribution of vaccines throughout the world. The socialist program, recognizing that coronavirus can be eradicated only through scientifically directed international strategy, calls for a global coordinated uh, inoculation program. Basically, they're saying... We need everybody's help in this situation. It doesn't really have to just be Pfizer and Moderna that lead the charge. If there's more vaccines out there, isn't America all about choice? Isn't that what capitalists always preach and talk about? Oh, it's the freedom of choice. You have all these choices. Look at the choices that you have. Now we we see, you know, we just saw, uh, I, I mentioned that I started reading an article about Bill Gates basically preventing uh, AstraZeneca's vaccine from being distributed on a high scale unless they partner up with whatever organization he wants. So we shouldn't be looking at it as this individualistic, like, America's going to save the world. No, everybody's going to have to do their part to save the world. This is not an individualistic hero country fucking bullshit. That doesn't work. That's not going to work in this situation. So what happens to people that expose this stuff, right? Uh, when you expose all of these issues, which the pandemic has, the pandemic has exposed uh, the 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 you know major problems within um, within capitalism and the way it works. It they attack them. They they use armed guards to basically attack the people that criticize capitalism. You know, look at what happened with GameStop. Uh, you know, you, you saw a bunch of nerds that uh, that brought GameStop back and proved that Wall Street is a Ponzi scheme and proved that maybe people becoming extremely wealthy over the, um, you know, destruction of a company is not particularly awesome that's not great that institution is fucked so they pointed that out and what happened robin hood decided that they're not going to have gamestop or uh amc or nokia stocks anymore and then discord shut down the wall street bets server and then google deleted all the bad reviews of robin hood so that it still looks like it's a good company so here's what happened after that here's what happened after that so check this out. Some activists went down to Wall Street and they did this. That that's uh they put tape on these statues. Uh this is from at you found Howie on Twitter, and it says, Hold the line. Um, and I think it's got um WSB Wall Street bets, I think is what that little like that tiny thing says. Uh and they did that to the bull as well. Hashtag hold the line, uh HMC WSB. 
and they put it on his butt too. I know this is probably not what people wanted to see right now. <laughs> is is a giant uh, metal ass of a bull with its balls right there. I know this is. I know it's early for people to see that, but this is important because this is this is this is how this is how fucking gamers protest, man. And I think it's kind of hilarious. Uh, so there you go. You have hold the line there again, right? So what happened after that is uh, the NYPD uh, fucking sent the cops after them. So the cops are now guarding the bull. Have you ever seen a bigger example to defund the police? I mean, how much more proof do you need that that the cops are not here to protect and serve? They are here to guard the shit of rich people. They're literally guarding a statue right now with armed gunmen and that's a response to people putting tape on a statue this is the response capitalism has this is why capitalism is failing this is why it doesn't work during a pandemic and you and you have a president that just doesn't want to just doesn't give a shit about it either I defeated the socialists, says Joe Biden. So he doesn't have to enact any any sort of socialist principles. He will continue to spin all the same shit, all of the seven things that was pointed out in that article. He'll continue to spin all of those things as if it was a good thing. And now that there's a Democrat in place, you're going to see a bunch of liberals being like, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. How much more proof do we need that capitalism doesn't care about you? So, you know, it's it's right in front of us now. Um, and it's becoming rather unignorable. Let's look at some comments. Uh, when we speak of capitalism, it's more like organized crime. Yeah. It's a Ponzi scheme. It's an organized crime. That's all. That's all it is. Never let a good crisis go to waste. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what they do. They, they like to take the opportunities. And as Ricky mentions here, uh, it was intentionally it's uh, to destroy small businesses. And it, and they did. And they destroyed small businesses. There's a lot of small businesses that will likely never recover, uh, that will come out of this crisis and hang on for a little while and have to go under. There's businesses that have already gone under. I've, I've, I've lost, like, uh, friends of mine have lost venues that they owned, you know, and like, and that then trick, you know, that that's how trickle down works. It trickles down and affects people like me. It affects uh, other touring performers that make, you know, make a living off of touring, make are working gig to gig uh, to pay their rent, to pay their bills, to put food on their table. GE made ventilators too. Yes, uh, they were they were looking to make ventilators. They were looking to make PPEs, um, you know, as as a way to to help people. But the CEO was like, "Yeah, let's keep making jet engines. That's that seems like a good idea." Technocrats to the rescue. Yes, uh, kind of, but not really. This would more or less be um, technocrats that are making money would get taxed. Uh, similar to what I to what Eisenhower did, and I think that should be what it should be. Again, that goes back into why Joe Biden won't approve uh, Medicare for all because we might like it too much. And let's say we come out of this pandemic at the end of the year, and they go, "But well, we're going to give all those tax loopholes back." Yeah, that won't fly with us. So they need to be really, really careful about how they uh, how they do this thing. Wasted milk. Wasted produce is unacceptable. Absolutely. Yeah, no country should be doing that. That that makes no logical sense at all. And if you have a system that says that that does make logical sense for the sake of the economy, then you should abandon that economy because it makes zero fucking sense. Uh, if COVID was a threat to human life, they would release the patent on the vaccines. Yes, uh, I think they need to absolutely release the patents on the vaccines. It should not be this for-profit thing. You should do what Dr. Salk did uh, and uh, and and let the vaccines, you know, be available for everyone for free. Uh, is there a link to this article? Yes, there is. I will leave it in the comment after the live stream because I just closed it out. Um, more cops protecting the bull than at the Capitol to stop the steal. Yeah, yeah, they were more worried about the bull than they were 
uh, about the about stopping the steal. Uh, not the first time they protected the bull either. Yes, that's also true because over the summer they uh, pushed protesters when they came near the bull. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook, especially Facebook and YouTube. They often uncensor people, uh, un unsubscribe people, and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows the forkful of noodles live virtual comedy shows uh the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website but if you're also on financial stable ground you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member which gets you free tickets and bonus content and go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to to make any kind of financial contributions but if you can't it's not a necessity most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.